Sam Altman's recent uh, podcast tour reveals the delusion driving the AI industry. He claims OpenAI has cracked reasoning and created AI on par with a human being at the PhD level in many subject matters. He's genuinely confused why society hasn't transformed more dramatically from this supposed breakthrough, saying, if I told you in 2020 we were going to make something like ChatGPT and it's going to be as smart as a PhD student in most areas, I bet you would say, okay, if that happens, the world looks way more different than it does right now. The reason the world doesn't look more different is blindingly obvious. These systems aren't actually as smart as PhD students. A team of Olympic medalist programmers, which I didn't even know was a thing until I was researching this uh, for this episode, they just published devastating research showing even the most advanced AI models achieve only 53% success on medium difficulty programming problems and 0% success on hard problems, domains where human experts excel. As Cambridge University researcher Sheila Heyman explains, a seven-year-old child can solve puzzles that break AI because we're embodied animals and we live in the real world. While Altman claims his AI m matches PhD-level thinking, these systems fundamentally lack the reasoning abilities humans develop naturally through physical experience. Meanwhile, the tech billionaire talent war escalates to absurd levels. Uh, did you hear Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has been offering $100 million compensation packages to AI researchers from OpenAI and Google DeepMind if they'll jump ship and uh, staff his new superintelligence team? all while the actual AI modules struggle with basic reasoning tasks. Now, I can already hear some of you out there screaming at your screens, yes, but this is as bad as the technology will ever be, and I say that all the time myself, or, but Altman says ChatGPT is coming this summer, and it will blow everyone away. And you're absolutely right. Technology improves rapidly, and today's limitations might be tomorrow's solved problems. Could ChatGPT or some future model actually achieve the superintelligence Altman and Zuckerberg and uh, you know Musk and everybody else uh, are spending millions to achieve? Absolutely, yes. We'd be fools to uh, think otherwise. The future is unwritten, and if there's one constant in technology, it is that today's impossibilities become tomorrow's boring features, which is another reason why the world doesn't look more different. Humans adapt, and we adapt quickly. Uh, just think back to COVID. I mean, think about what we went through with that, with the masks and the testing and, uh, you know, the, the staying inside and uh, all of that. Although in Missouri, we didn't care. We ran around and jumped in the backwater jack swimming pool and got our picture taken on uh, some national newspaper. We've got good food, by the way, if you're in Lake of the Ozarks. Backwater jacks. Good stuff. Um. But just look at like uh, MIT's groundbreaking research from just a couple of days ago on self-adapting language models, systems that literally rewrite themselves in real time. Pure digital self-surgery. We're talking about AI, AI that can improve itself without human supervision. These models actively generate their own training materials, self-edit, and update their internal weights to get better at tasks. The researchers described it as systems that essentially take notes on their own performance and update themselves accordingly, just like a student learning from their mistakes. This approach opens a legitimate path toward AI that maintains coherence over complex long-term tasks, which right now is a problem if you've ever used the technology. You can give it a list of 10 things and it'll remember the first three, but not the next seven. Uh, you know, that's a ge generalization for sure, but it's Pretty much like that. Um, potentially automating sig significant portions of machine learning research itself, because if it can remember long tasks, it'll just improve that much more. And that's something you've got to know when you're doing your prompt engineering, when you're doing your prompt work with these things. You, you can't give it long lists of things to do. You've got to chunk it up, as they say. We're not skinny dip dipping. We're Chunky Duncan, Chunkin, Chunkin Duncan, something like that, I don't know. Uh, as we approach the limits of publicly available training data, these self-improvement loops will become essential for future advancement. The capability gap between current models and what's coming isn't marketing hype. It's supported by legitimate research. So the 
AI doomers among you, me included for sure, need to acknowledge that these systems will get dramatically better at an accelerating rate. You know, I'm on the fence, uh, knowing it wasn't just one 17 hour uh, looking around for a an error to, to, to fix what I've been working on. I've been working on it for about three months, by the way. I know I was not very clear in the last episode about that, but, uh, yeah, that's a project and it's ongoing. This is the crucial point. Here's the crucial question we should all be asking. If these systems can't reason now, if they're failing at basic debugging while being hyped as PhD level intellects, why should we trust the same people when they make even grander claims about future models? Now, I know that I sound like uh, I'm someone who hates AI. That's, uh, it's just the opposite. I love AI. I read about it daily. That's all I do. That's my, that's my job right now. I read about it. I watch videos about it. I talk to you about it. I build programs with it. Um, so I love the technology. It's just when you look around, there's a disconnect between current capabilities and future promises. It's kind of like a paradox, like we were talking about. We're being asked to make economic decisions right now about careers, jobs, you know, your job, whether you're going to have one, skills, education, and business models based on promises from people who are demonstrably overstating what their current technology can do, which is not a good place to be, you know. And I wish I had all the answers for you, but I don't. Uh, like I said in the last episode, uh, one person will say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, and the next person says it's, it's junk. You know, nobody truly knows what's coming next. GT, GPT-5 might indeed change everything, or it might be just another incremental step with the same fundamental limitations. MIT's self-adapting models might revolutionize AI capabilities, or they might create systems that get really good at optimizing for all the wrong things. The only certainty is uncertainty, and in that uncertainty is both peril and opportunity. What Altman and other tech leaders fundamentally misunderstand is that human intelligence goes beyond pattern matching. It's embodied in our physical existence. As Sheila Heyman explains, all living things are born to explore, and we do so with all of our senses from birth. That gives us a model of the world and everything in it. This embodied intelligence makes humans incredibly efficient compared to AI. Heyman points out, the computers that drive an autonomous car use anything upwards of a kilowatt of energy, while a human driver runs on 20-something watts of renewable power, and we don't need an extra bacon sandwich to remember a new route. Although that sounds pretty good right now, I haven't had supper. Think about that contrast. AI systems require gigawatts of electricity, nuclear reactors, and massive data centers, yet they're fundamentally less capable than a human child at many reasoning tasks. A human can learn to recognize any cat after seeing it just a couple of times. An AI needs tens of thousands of individual images and still might fail to recognize a cat playing with a ping pong ball. This gap between appearance and reality defines the AI paradox. These systems appear intelligent because they've ingested massive amounts of human-created content, but fundamentally lack the reasoning abilities that come naturally to humans. While Altman wonders why a society doesn't look or feel more different, a massive physical transformation is already underway. In the small town of Ellendale, North Dakota, a company called Applied Digital is building what amounts to a digital factory spanning 400 megawatts of power capacity, enough electricity to power roughly 300,000 homes, and it's all dedicated to training AI models. In Texas alone, utility company Encore uh, has received inquiries to connect 119 gigawatts of new load. That's almost four times the peak usage of its entire existing system. The scale is staggering with mid-sized utilities seeing proposals that would double their entire systems. Well, what's the solution? So far, it's been a nuclear uh, re renaissance. Microsoft is literally trying to restart the Three Mile Island Unit 1 reactor in Pennsylvania, specifically for data center energy. Amazon is funding four small modular reactors to supply its West Coast data centers. Google signed an agreement with reactor startup Keros Power to develop advanced reactors by 2030. 
While tech billionaires make grand claims and build trillion-dollar infrastructure, an entirely new expertise market has emerged. This isn't about snake oil or grifting. It's about people strategically positioning themselves at the interface between flawed AI systems and real-world applications. We talk about this a lot. Get ahead of the technology. Be a step ahead of uh, where the te technology is so you can explain it to people. Learn and pivot. That should, probably should be the name of this channel. What makes this market fascinating is the extraordinary contrast between how these AI experts present their services versus the reality of the technology. They're selling mastery of systems that Olympic medalists just proved score 0% on complex reasoning tasks. This perfectly illustrates the AI paradox. You don't need to be an expert in something that works flawlessly. Expertise becomes valuable precisely because these systems are fundamentally flawed. The market is responding rationally to the contradiction between AI's impressive capabilities and its glaring limitations. As we covered in our AI orchestration episode last month, those who understand how to direct these systems, recognizing both their strengths and their weaknesses, will be the ones who thrive in this new economy. They're not selling false hope. They're selling necessary translation skills between flawed technology and practical applications. To understand where we're really heading, consider Google Translate. Remember when it launched, people claimed it would be the end of human translators? Yet today, the number of translator jobs is actually increasing. As one developer explains, Google Translate excels at direct word-for-word -word translation, but struggles with context, cultural nuance, and ambiguity. The same applies to programming. AI can generate impressive code, translate words, but can't handle the contextual complexities, complexity edge cases, and system-level thinking required to debug it. Cultural nuances. The future belongs to humans who understand AI's strengths and limitations. From verifying AI-generated legal documents to curating brand voices, humans will remain essential where trust, taste, and complexity matter. We're moving from doing the work to designing how the work gets done with AI as our tool, not our replacement. We're witnessing the most absurdly contradictory technological revolution in human history. AI exists as sophisticated enough to replace millions of jobs, fundamentally broken and unable to function without human oversight, the foundation of trillion-dollar physical infrastructure, the subject of a billionaire arms race for superintelligence, the basics the basis of a strategic expertise market for navigating flawed systems. The machines are coming for our jobs and occasionally stopping to uh, run face first into uh, uh, sliding glass doors. If you're concerned about your economic future in this AI-driven world, you need to understand both what these systems can and cannot do. The key survival strategy lies in positioning yourself where human reasoning, trust, and embodied intelligence remains essential. So please hit subscribe and like to continue documenting this digital extinction event with me and comedic show on just how broken AI can be sometimes and drop a comment with your thoughts on this uh, AI paradox. Have you experienced both the impressive capabilities and frustrating limitations of AI? I know I have millions of times so far. So uh, let me know below, and uh, I appreciate your comments. And remember, the future belongs to humans who understand uh, AI's strengths and limitations, and, and not to those who blindly believe the hype or the fear of technology. It's kind of a balancing act right now, and it's going to, I'm afraid it's going to continue to be that way for quite some time to come. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>